But my name is Ignacio Maria Viola. I'll tell you today about America's Cup yachts and the sales of America's Cup yachts, which is the field where I've been working the last 15 years. So if you imagine an airplane, you can actually see that the wings of an airplane has a lot of in common with the sails of a yacht. If you take the wing and you take a section of the wing, you will see a foil, this foil here. And so what we would like to do now is to look at the forces which are experienced by this foil. The foils will experience a wind coming forward and it will generate two forces typically, the lift and the drag. The lift is what brings the airplane up and sustain the weight and the drag is what you have to overcome with the power of your engine. So that means that the lift over drag ratio is a sort of a measure of your efficiency. So it means basically that for the same weight, you will need more or less fuel to move forward with your airplane. So the lift of a drag ratio is the key parameter that shows you the efficiency of the foil. The other interesting thing is that if we want to compute or predict these forces, we need to solve this equation. And what this equation tells you is that the lift and the force only depends on two different things, the shape of the foil and the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is this number here. And the reason why it is important is because it means that the forces on the airplane or on a bird, they are the same as long as the Reynolds number is the same. So it doesn't matter if the airplane is bigger or faster or slower. What it counts is this ratio here, the ratio between the velocity, the size, and the viscosity. So that allows us to look at how the lift and the forces, sorry, how the lift over drag ratio varies with the Reynolds number. And as you can see, if you have a large Reynolds number, which means either a very high velocity or a very large size, you will have a large Reynolds number and a very efficient foil. But if you go slower or smaller, then the Reynolds number goes down and the efficiency of your foil drops down. So the key point here is that to make an airplane flying efficiently is far easier than to make a yacht sail efficiently because the Reynolds number goes down and the efficiency of your foils goes down. Now, the reason for that is that at high Reynolds number, the flow is mostly attached around your foil and remaining attached around the foil leads to very low drag. On the contrary, if you go at low Reynolds number, the flow will separate more easily from the foil. You will have a large region of low speed and the drag increases. And that will make you a very inefficient. So let's look at the America's Cup yachts now. If you look at the 1980s typical America's Cup yachts, you will see that there is one big sail, which is the main sail, which really much resembles the wing of an airplane. It works pretty much in the same way. But then you have this very strange sail, which is smaller, and it's called spinnaker, or it used to be smaller in some conditions at least. But even if it was smaller, the amount of thrust that these sails generate could be enormous, much bigger than the one generated by the main sail. Now, in the 1980s, these sails were not particularly efficient because, we, as we said, it is difficult for a sail which is slower and smaller than the wing of an airplane to have attached flow. In fact, if you do experiments, you see the flow coming. Uh, this one is a, a horizontal section of your sails. This one will be your main sail, and this one will be your spinnaker. The flow comes from the top, goes around the spinnaker, but then it separates and generates a region of low speed and high drag. And this is not efficient. It increases the drag for the same amount of lift. Now, about 10 years later, thanks to a guy called Tom Schnackenberg from New Zealand, he invented this amazing shape, which is not called spinnaker anymore, after many years. We now have jennakers. Now, the jennakers have actually the capability to retain the attached flow behind them. And that is a major step in terms of the efficiency of the sails we basically overcome the limitation of the Reynolds number and we manage to have attached flow around a sails which is smaller and go slower than an airplane. 
Now, let's have a look at what was happening at the same time in the rest of the world. What was happening is that if we look at very, very low Reynolds number, it looks like, for instance, insects. They are small and they go slowly. So they have to face a very inefficient condition. So how do they fly? The answer we did not know until a guy in Cambridge found out that what the insects do is not to have an attached or separated flow, but is to have a large vertical structure, which is this vortex here, which is called leading edge vortex, and the flow separates from the wing, but instead of going away, it starts swirling, and, it, and this very fast motion will generate lift, which is what the, the insect needs to fly. Just more recently, in 2004, in another lab, we realized that actually also birds sometimes exploit this leading edge vortex to enhance the lift that they need. So, let's go back again to the original plot. That shows you that this curve does not go down to zero, but actually there is a way to generate lift even at very low Reynolds number. So, if you look at planes, yaws, and then birds and insects, there is a continuous curve which goes from the attached flow to a region where actually the best way forward is to generate vortices and to keep this vortex stably attached to your sail or to your wing. So the question we have now, do our sails exploit this mechanism or they don't? So what happened when I was doing my PhD, it was not 2000, but it was in that decade. And this one is an example of what uh, during those years we were capable to do. Basically, it was the years where it was starting to have supercomputers and America's Cup team started to exploit these computational resources to perform very high performance simulations. And this one in particular is the first one billion cells numerical simulation to ever perform, which was one of the outcome of my PhD. So from here, we develop typically the knowledge we need to design cells. Now, every roughly three years, the power of a computer increases by 10 times. So what you see, and you can imagine here, is that this numerical simulation now is far more advanced than the previous one, even if you don't notice that. But what this numerical simulation 10 years later allow us to do is to actually realize that the flow does not just go around the sails, but indeed generates a leading edge vortex, which improves the amounts of lift that we use when sailing. This is quite amazing. You can imagine that a particle of flow coming along this line will be in inside this vortex and while it is flying almost horizontally here, when it fits inside the vortex, it will change completely direction and it will start to climb up towards the head of the sails. So the particle flow moving horizontally and it's trapped into the vortex and just goes up. And this generates lift. You can see that also in this example, where you can see the particle flow coming from here when you watch the, the, the sailing yachts from the top which is entrapped into this leading edge vortex and climbs down. Now, what it is extremely interesting here is that all of this was found just thanks to large supercomputer. But was that reality? Does it really happen in real life? Well, this simulation here was performed in 2014, so not so many years ago. And it takes some time for science to actually find out a way forward to measure something so detailed and specific to be able to actually give proof that this is reality and not just the effect of numerical simulations. And so here I can actually show you for the first time an experiment where you can see the cells seen from the top again, but these streamlines, so these lines which represent the, the, the way um, where the, the flow particle travel travel along, you can see this large leading edge vortex here, and this is the first time that we can see this experimentally ever on a yacht sails. So let me thank my research group, which has allowed to all of this research to happen, 
and also the three America's Cup teams that I've been working with and those simulations I refer to. Thanks. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.